Okay, so in general, step one was to set up your device as a developer. Check. Step two, we got the right driver. We uh, installed the driver so that the computer can communicate with the device. Some of you then saw a little pop-up that says allow debugging. You'll have to turn that on one time and then it'll remember. And then we saw inside of the device manager, it looks like I've got my Android device. It shows the Motorola interface. Okay, so for several of you then, I did the next step here, which is to create an, to create an app, a quick app, to see the result. For, for us then, for everyone else, I'm going to do this step three part and then we'll get started because I, I have this project that, uh, I, I, that we're going to start to work with. What we worked on Tuesday, I didn't save it, I didn't put it in the network folder, I deleted it, it didn't matter, it was a testing project. Um, this steps here on, on item three are to go into a, a, no, a taco project and taco or an Android device. You don't have a device, you're not going to do this. You're going to do either Taco Emulate Android or Taco Emulate Browser. You'll see that a little later. Then the device, uh, then the app loaded up on my device. And it was that Cordova project. I have here, if this doesn't work, you might want to try these various things here. Obviously not restarting your computer here because everything you did will get erased. But if you're doing this at home, simply restarting your computer often helps. What also often helps is to simply unplug it and replug it. That seems to work sometimes. And then if all else fails, you did this stuff, sometimes what you need to do is go over to my Sheet 3B, set up an older device. None of you here needed to seem to do this, so I won't dwell on this, but on 3B, this is a way for you to install an app on an older device. I've tested this also. Again, I still have that old dusty Android 2.2 device that it doesn't work to do the, the taco steps. I have to do the old ADB method. Uh, so those are the steps there. You probably don't need it unless you have an older device, so I won't really say anything about this. And then ultimately, if this, if this method doesn't work, the older method, the newer method, then unfortunately, number six just doesn't work can't do anything about it. doesn't work. What I can do is suggest to spend maybe that $20 on the device that I saw on Amazon, or if all goes according to plan, we might have a class of devices Tuesday. They weren't able to set it up for today, so we might have real devices on Tuesday if you want to use a tablet. All, all I will need is for you to give a blood sample and you'll be able to get it, no problem. Uh, so step three, we just again need to do it once on your home computer, but here you'll need to do it every time. I'm done with my uh, handout number three. Any any questions on handout number three? Okay, I'm going to I'm going to give you a new a new uh, handout. If you go to the network folder, I just added a new handout. Campus number four, Taco Workflow. We have these separate pieces and concepts. I've got these various handouts that spell it all out for the purposes of our class, which you can, of course, deviate from whenever you want to. We're all going to be following these steps, basically. So therefore, whenever anything goes wrong, I'll help you out, of course, but most likely, not to be glib, my first question will be to you, what step are you on on the handout? If you are having trouble, I'll probably ask, what step are you on on the handout? What handout? The handout that, handouts that I'm giving you, of course. I'll turn the printer on a little bit later if you want to print it out. But for the moment, let's look at handout number four, Taco Workflow. After all the components are set up, we will create a basic app to be our template for future apps. Whenever we do Taco Create, it's a brand new project. Well, we might have to add plugins, we might have to set various uh, permissions and configuration elements. Why not create a template? This template then, this file is self-contained, and all I need to do is make a copy of that folder, and I've got a brand new app ready to go. I don't need to do Taco Create 
taco CD, taco platform ad, taco plugin ad. I don't have to do all of those separate steps if I just do it on a template file, which I simply copy the folder. In your, uh, if you don't have it open yet, we're going to go to the command prompt. And there's a couple of ways to do it. Go to your start menu, and if you start typing node, you should see node command prompt, not the one that simply says node. That's a different version. Node exe, you don't want that one. You want node.js command prompt, which is the same as if I had searched for command prompt, basically. So if you don't have your command prompt open, go ahead and open it. Mine has ended up in uh, my C drive, and if I type dir, I've got some basic quick DOS commands. Question? So there's, there's a difference between node.js and node.js command prompt? You should see node.exe and node.js command prompt. Okay. There is a difference. You don't want the exe one. You want the .js command prompt. Okay. Yes, I've got some quick command prompt commands here, some quick DOS commands. Uh, in the old days when you got a computer with DOS 6.22, they gave you this cool manual that was, you know, 500 pages thick and it had every command. They don't do that anymore. But here's five or six that we need. As we're typing in the command prompt, then we have a lot of stuff to look at. Sometimes this gets pretty cluttered. Once in a while, I'm going to be clearing my command prompt just to focus. That's CLS to clear the screen. Um, you know, if I've got all of these things on screen and it's kind of cluttered, CLS clears the screen. If I want to change between folders, it's CD, change directory. If you've got a folder that has spaces, it's best to put quotes around the folder. So DIR, remember, is a listing of the directory of the folder. And I don't have any examples. Oh yeah, I have saved games. So if I was going to go into saved games, it may work that I type CD saved games, and sometimes not. It's much more guaranteed to work if you type quote, quotes, saved games. I'm in my user folder. I want to go to the desktop. There's a folder there of desktop, so I would type CD space desktop. Um, capitalization doesn't quite matter on Windows, but if you're on Linux or the Mac, it does. But you might as well get used to the capitalization. So CD desktop. And one of the things that's cool is there is a um, there's a uh, autocomplete here. Let's say I wanted to go into the folder Android Studio Projects. I would type CD Android Studio. I'm already tired. Projects. Well, before finishing typing a folder or some commands, I can press Tab on the keyboard and it'll finish typing the rest of the folder. So if I've got a really long folder I need to go into, I press Tab. And it often even works on just little pieces of the file name. Well, depending on the folder. I've already got an Android folder, which is conflicting with my Android Studio 1.3 and my Android Studio project. So it's not perfect. But if I wanted to go into the say into the saved games folder, if I start typing saved, it may complete it for me with a tab. And I'll remind us of that, but. Let's say I want to go into the desktop. CD space DE tab recognizes the desktop. If there was something else called default, it doesn't know. Do I, you want to go into the default folder or the desktop folder? So perhaps type enough for it so that it knows where you want to go to, and then tab, and it fills in the rest. If you keep pressing tab? Oh, OK, that's useful. Let's see here, Android. Oh, okay, cool. Tab cycle through. So instead of typing a huge name, you can tab to autocomplete. At the moment, I want to, uh, if you're not there already, I'm going to go to my desktop. 
DIR to see the directory listing. And definitely for something like these that I have these big names, documents that have shortcut link, that I would tab to autocomplete. If I wanted to go into the Adobe TCC S16 folder, <coughs> I would tab that. And notice the DIR, the directory listing, tells you these are directories. You cannot go into the Opera Link folder. CD folder name, change directory. CD space dot dot goes back one directory. So if I've gone into CD Ado uh, Adobe DCC, I'm inside of user folder, instructor folder, desktop folder, Adobe folder. Oops, I want to back up back to desktop folder. CD space dash dot dot. That'll take me back one level. All of these, of course, you have to press enter or nothing happens. CD into a folder, CD dot dot to back up one folder. DIR to get a directory listing. This one's cool. Press up arrow on the keyboard to cycle through your last commands. I want to type a command that I just typed a moment ago, and it was a big one. I don't want to type it again and type it wrong. On the keyboard, you can press up, and it brings back your last command. You press up again, you're previous to the last command. You can cycle up or down. You press down. You can cycle through all of your recent commands. So if I want to go, if I actually did want to go back into the Adobe folder, I don't want to retype it. I pressed up twice, and it was my second to last command. Enter, and then I'm there. Press up, and you know, still remembers my list of commands. When I want to switch to a to a flash drive, I need to know the drive letter of the of the flash drive. On mine, I do have to take a look over on computer to see that my flash drive is on F. Yours may be on D, maybe on G, I don't know. Mine's on F. My flash drive is F drive. Knowing that, I type F colon, not CD, technically I'm not changing directory, uh, F colon, enter, and I'm on my F drive. My prompt says you're on the F drive. DIR to see what's on it. Here's my class for this semester. So if I wanted to CD into that, it's a big old mess of a file name that I can type in Windows easily, but in DOS or the command prompt here, I have to type that, or I can tab CD 2016 10 tab. Do I mean the SEO class? No. Tab. Do I mean the Android class part two? Yes. Enter. So I'm on my C I'm on my F drive. I'm in a subfolder. I can navigate around. There's of course still a hundred more DOS commands here that I could learn. I don't need them really. These are the ones that are listed here to get us to do what we really need. Clearing the directory, all of this. It's all in the handout. Any questions on the command prompt? Crash course? Okay, number three. Decide where you're going to be saving your taco projects. When you open node command prompt, you'll probably be in your user folder. So here I'm just saying, let's create a folder. I'm assuming this is on your home computer when I, when I wrote this. On ours, we could have one more command, which is to make a directory, mkdir, space, and then the name of a folder. That's the same as if, it, if I did right-click new folder. But if I'm in the command prompt, I have a command for it, mkdir, make directory, space apps. And all that I'm saying here is, perhaps create a folder on your flash drive, or on the desktop called apps, and I called it so short because I'm going to need to type that. If I call a folder 
Summer Class Projects, Android Part 2, Version 1. Well, I'm going to need to type that. Um, so simply calling it apps on my flash drive is fine, and then I can quickly get to it. So you can either do this in the command prompt for practice, or you can do it in the safety of the Windows interface. But for practice, I, if I go to my flash drive, I'm on my flash drive in the command prompt, F drive in my case, DIR, I'm looking at my flash drive. I want to make a folder for all my taco projects. MKDIR, make directory, space, apps, enter, DIR, and I've got a folder called apps. All my projects will exist there for this class. You can use any name you want, any folder structure you want, of course. This is just a suggestion. CD apps. Now I'm in the proper folder in the prompt. So I'm going to be working off of my flash drive because, again, we have deep freeze on these computers. Once you turn them off, you've lost everything you've done. Um, this will be the safest way to do it. It is a little slower, unfortunately, because uh, we're transferring through USB. Um, but at least you won't lose your projects. Okay, so we're going to create a template project. This will be the basis of future projects. I'm in my apps folder. Taco create template with a unique identifier and an app name. Just to confirm, I'm in my apps folder on my flash drive. Taco software option create option the name of the folder of this project template space option or uh, argument a unique identifier in reverse website order. Um, Whatever this is, this can be fake. Dot Jones. Dot com, Smith. Dot com, Quantis. Dot net, whatever, whatever your last name is. Com. Dot your last name. Dot the name of the project folder, which is in this case template. This uniquely identifies it. If I was going to eventually upload this to the app stores, this is what differentiates me from every other template project in the app store. Space the name of my app in quotes, so quote, end quote, and because it's the uh, command prompt, you want to use the arrow keys on the keyboard to move that little cursor around. If you have Windows 10, I believe you are able to click where you want your cursor to appear. But here on Windows 7, you want to use your arrow keys on the keyboard to move the little cursor between the quotes. And this will be template app or anything we want. That'll be the icon, that that'll be the text it appears below our icon, be it an iPhone app, an Android app, a Windows app, whatever. Icon name, unique identifier, project folder, creating a taco project. Press enter. Let's just confirm me here what you typed, creating the project. The first time you do this, it may be slow because it has to download some online resources. Subsequent times will be faster. If you got any error messages, uh, very common reasons that we get error messages are misspellings, like right here. Takan is not recognized as an internal command. Oops, I misspelled taco. Some of these misspellings will cause everything to fail. Some of these will proceed, but they're not quite a mistake. Taco creates unknown taco command, passing it to Cordova, and Cordova's going to say, what's creates? And you get a big old scary red error. So again, this is very unforgiving. If you type it wrong, you typed it wrong. It'll try to tell you what you typed wrong, but sometimes this is very esoteric. 
and kind of looking through the gibberish. Uh, unknown taco command. Uh, oh, I see. Creates. I misspelled it. If I had misspelled anything else, it technically would not be uh, a mistake. If I'm calling this taco create templates, great. It'll do that. It'll make a folder called templates. If I misspelled, you know, my name in here, that's not really a mistake. It'll let me do it. I can fix that later. If I misspell the names of the icon, again, that's not a mistake. It, that's a that's a logic error, not a syntax error. All of that can be further edited in the config XML file. We'll get to it later. Uh, okay, so we've created a taco project. In order for any other subsequent commands to work, we need to be in the project folder. CD change directory into the template, and then we will do this time taco platform add Android browser. Again, I'm forgetting to mention the spaces, but uh, cd space uh, template, and then taco space uh, platform space add space Android space browser. We can add more than one device template at once. Previously we did platform add Android, and later we did taco platform add browser. We could add the Android template and the browser template, and if we were on, on a Mac, the iOS template, and if we wanted also the Windows template. We can add all the templates at once, simply separating them with spaces. The ones we want to work with are just Android and browser. We don't have a Mac, so we can't use iOS. We don't have all of the requirements for creating a Windows app. We could. We don't have them installed, though, so we don't use that one. We could do also, what else do we have? Firefox OS. We don't have those fully set up yet. So what we do have set up, Android and browser. Excuse me, could you say that uh, this ties in there again? Which one? Uh, it's like the uh, Samsung. Tizen, I don't know how to pronounce it. I call it Tizen. Uh, yeah, that one, um, I believe that one is available as well if you've got the SDK installed. I never heard it pronounced in the real world. Tizen. Tizen. Um, so, press enter on that, it'll connect back over to. Uh, your SDK, it'll see you've got your Android template, it'll add it, it says something about plugin and so forth, stuff zooms by, eventually it says, okay, then we're adding the browser version, creating browser version of the project. Once that's done, just for fun, type taco platform. We'll get back to the handout in a moment, but just taco platform. This lists installed platforms and available platforms, but we could have also done web OS. Android without browser. So what I say here, this will create the Android project and the Google Chrome web browser project. Um, taco install Rex Android is not required if you've done it already at least once you don't need to do it in this lab I've done it for us it would have downloaded 400 megabytes of stuff you need to do this on your own computer taco install Rex once then every other project you create in the future is ready it has the Android requirements we are gonna activate then every plugin uh, I don't expect you to type it. I have a copy and paste here. If you go into the network folder again, I have that command ready for you to copy and paste. So instead of, uh, I don't think you can select it here. If you can select from the PDF, great. But if not, in the network folder, Cordova all plugins. A text file if you get a copy of that. In that text file, if you select all and copy, all of the 20 
basic permissions are in this one command. Taco, plugin, add, and then a particular permission. I want to check the battery status. Space, Cordova plugin camera. I want to use the camera. Space, Cordova plugin console. I want the advanced console. Space, contacts. I want to access the device's contacts. We're asking for a lot of permissions. Our app is going to be able to read the contacts of a device. It's a very powerful feature. Not required at all times. But for this template project, we're going to activate all permissions, all features. If you select all here and then copy, and then in the command prompt, Control V doesn't work on Windows 7. I believe it works on Windows 10. Control V does a weird character, so you don't want that. You want to right click, paste. Right click and paste into the command prompt. And this is going to be taco plugin add, etc., 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 etc. Vibration, we will be able to make the device vibrate, we will be able to capture audio and video. We will be able to use the in-app browser, advanced geolocation features, write stuff on a status bar. You're going to paste that in, and then of course you're going to do what? Enter. Nothing will happen until you enter. Again, uh, we've, we're creating this template file so that I don't have to do this every time I want to create a new project. This template file is self-contained. Once we fully set it up according to this handout, we just make a copy of the folder in Windows or your Mac or whatever, and that's a brand new project that has all of the permissions, that has the Android and the browser templates and other things we will edit, and it's ready for a new app. Later on, we'll say, well, as we wrap up the project in a month and a half, um, actually, we never needed the, um, you know, we never needed the battery status um, permission. So we will be able to do eventually taco, um, plugin, remove battery status. It's better to have your app only use the minimum number of permissions because when someone's gonna download an app it'll pop up and say this app would like to get access to your camera your contacts vibration etc etc and someone's gonna say why does this calculator need to look at my contacts why is this calculator saying it's gonna record voice um, so this activates all the permissions which we're not gonna need but We'll have them, we need to have them active in order to actually use them. And the first time we do it, it may be slow because we're all doing it at once. We're all connecting back to the cordova.apache.org central server. If you'd like to, you can confirm that they're all installed by typing taco plugin. We had taco plugin, uh, taco uh, platform add, and we have taco plugin add. If you just type taco plugin, it'll list all of the plugins our app has. These are the basic ones. Later on, we can play with barcode scanner. Bluetooth interface, push notifications, all of that stuff that a real app does. Okay, Taco Build. This one is optional most of the time because whenever we do Taco Emulate or Taco Run, it will throw in a build first. For the moment, we'll build it. This will compile. This will build the... We didn't specify Taco Build Android, and we didn't specify Taco Build Browser, so it'll do both. It'll do them, I think, alphabetically. So first it'll do Taco Build Android. When that's done, then it'll do Taco Build Browser. And both versions of my app will be built and ready to deploy. 
If you only want to build a certain one, let's say I've added the iOS platform and the Android platform, but I've only changed the iOS version of the code. I can do taco build iOS, and it'll only build that one and leave the Android one if I didn't make any changes to my Android specific code. And again, the first time you do this, it'll be slow. In subsequent times, it'll be faster. As this is building, I would not be editing anything in that folder. You could conflict with the command prompt. You can have files open, but uh, you shouldn't edit them. As that's running, in a moment we're also going to go into our config file and make a few changes there and talk about a few things we didn't get to last time. And this will be our first handout to set ourselves up. Mine took 1 minute 30 seconds. We'll do the second part of this handout in just a moment right after the break. Uh, we're going to edit the config file, put some extra permissions and preferences, and then we'll proceed. So at 7.20, we'll take a break until 7.30, and then we'll go on. I'll turn the printer back on if you want a copy of any of these handouts, because we have ink now.